we're very pleased to join you in that metaverse today. I'm Melinda Shu Taylor, executive producer and showrunner of Nancy Drew on The CW. And our topic is Nancy and her two dads, because in episode 116, we found out that Carson Drew is not the moral compass father figure Nancy always expected him to be. In fact, he's not actually her biological father. He secretly took her into his family when she was a baby, which was her biological mother's dying wish. Spoiler. Ryan Hudson, um, another character on the show, is actually Nancy's biological father. And when he learns that truth, it's a lot for him to get his head around, as you'll see in this clip from episode 117. This scene starts about 10 minutes after Ryan learns that Nancy is his illegitimate child. And in the meantime, he's helped Nancy with mystical blood ritual in the woods for other reasons. And now they are on their way back to a fancy birthday party. So let's see the clip. Hey, are you, uh, are you okay? Yeah. Thank you for helping. Yeah, I hope it works. Me too. Hey, should we, um, <clears throat> I don't know, should we, like, go maybe get a, a coffee or something sometime? I don't think I'm ready for that. Going to excuse myself. Ryan, before Lucy died, she told us that the Hudsons weren't safe. That meant you. Lucy didn't know the truth, did she? She died thinking I abandoned her. Nancy would have been safe with me. And I lost the chance to raise her because of you. I know what it feels like now to have a secret that you don't want anybody to know because if they find out, it'll change everything. I was afraid I was going to lose you. Keeping the secret changes everything, too. So. I'll sleep in my office loft. Starting tonight. I'll give you that space you want for as long as you no, want. I'll stay in your house. I'm going to New York, actually, with Owen. You don't have to run away. I need to be someplace you're not. Noga Landau, our show's creator and executive producer, Riley Smith, also known as billionaire and reformed playboy Ryan Hudson, Scott Wolf, who plays small town lawyer and general beacon of decency, Carson Drew, and Kennedy McMahon, Nancy Drew herself. Everybody. Hello. Hi. Oh. So we're going to kick it off with some questions for each other. Um, and I'm going to start by asking a question to Kennedy. So, Kennedy, you started the season not knowing the big twist that was coming in episode 116. So you found out along with Nancy that Carson Drew is not her biological father, that in order to protect her, he kept the truth hidden for 19 years, your entire life. So how did the revelation make you feel about Nancy's relationship with Carson versus your biological father, Ryan Hudson? Yeah, uh, great question. It was, it's a very complicated reaction for Nancy, as you would imagine. Um, I mean, she, from Carson, you know, for her relationship with Carson, it's a huge betrayal, as you would imagine. Um, and I know Nancy kind of got some fans kind of called out her reaction and she was kind of overreacting to something, but it's more than just, you know, you lied to me about my identity, but all of these lies over and over and over again amounted to every single risk I've taken it all season long and everything I've asked my friends to do all season long and all of these horrible traumatic experiences that they've gone through in, in pursuit of, of the truth about Lucy. And so it's, 
such an enormous betrayal on every single level. And I think for her, she always saw a light at the end of the tunnel with the trouble they were having at the beginning of the season. You know, she, she always knew that they would find, you know, deep down that they would find their way back to each other. Um, and they did. And to have this after everything she did to prove his innocence and through all that they went through that he never told her the truth it, is such a difficult thing for her to deal with feeling like he's the number one person in her life and now not knowing what they are to each other anymore, you know, what she owes him or what he owes her. And um, so that's very complicated and, and creates a, a huge struggle for identity. And then on the other hand, you have now this introduction of Ryan Hudson is my dad biologically. How does that make me feel? And she's already sort of lost this identity with losing who she thought she was because she's not, you know, this person's daughter. She's sort of kind of out there on her own and then stuck between that and this new identity that she sort of presented, which is here's your Hudson family and this family that she absolutely detests. And so she's sitting in the middle and not, not really knowing who to lean on. And I think that she doesn't really know how to configure in her brain where these two people in her life live. So I think that'll be relevant as we continue on in season two. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you guys a question, Melinda Noga. Um, obviously, as we all know, love triangles are everybody's most loved and most hated part of great television. <laughs> um, they're, you know, filled with tension and drama and, and all that good stuff. Um, obviously, there is no romance in our dad triangle, unless Carson and Ryan are going to get up to something. <laughs> I just work here. I don't make the rules. But um, besides the romance part, which aspects of a great triangle of television are you excited to see play out between the three of these characters? No, but you go first. I go first. Well, I mean, there's so much, but I think one of the coolest parts about having a love triangle that isn't necessarily romantic is you never know when it's going to flip, right? So right at the beginning, it's like Nancy's at the top of the triangle, and then here's Carson and Ryan at the bottom, but you never know when it's suddenly going to be Carson at the top of the triangle and Nancy and Ryan trying to vie for him. You never know if Ryan and... Um, Carson are going to suddenly have an intriguing bromance with each other where they find that they have more in common than not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something that I love about Ryan Hudson as a character is that he has dad issues. And <laughs> there's Carson, <laughs> who's like the ultimate dad in this show. So I think there's, there's these great moments coming up um, in season two where it, you almost realize like Ryan needs a dad just as much as Nancy does. And Carson really kind of fits that for him in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I also, I love that you said bromance because one of my favorite love triangle scenes in classic film and Shane, there's this great moment where, you know, Shane, the ranch hand has fallen for the wife of the fellow who's hired him. And so they should be rivals, but in this bar fight, they end up fighting on the same side. And there's this moment where they make eye contact and they kind of grin at each other, kind of like, yeah, we're also buddies, you know? And, and I love that. Um, not promising any bar fights, but I do love that kind of unexpected friendship between, you know, folks who you would think are going to be at odds. And then um, my other, one of my favorite love triangle moments, there's a Japanese version, the original Shall We Dance? Not the Jennifer Lopez movie, nothing against it, I never saw it. But the Japanese film is wonderful and restrained and, this businessman has been taking ballroom dance lessons secretly and keeping it from his kind of, you know, neglected housewife. And she finds out and is really crushed. And, and then towards the end of the movie, his daughter, the businessman's daughter is kind of like, dad, you're being lame. Go dance with mom. You were great dancing. Why don't you teach mom? And so he's very awkwardly trying to teach her how to ballroom dance in their tiny little moonlit front yard. And, and they're shuffling around together and he's just telling her the steps, but gradually their body language shifts and he draws her just a little bit closer and finally he says I'm sorry I hurt you and that's all they say but you see that they reconcile in this moment so that part of a triangle where by looking elsewhere and not even necessarily consummating it but when you come home again it transforms your relationship and deepens it in a really unexpected way beautifully said beautiful I have a question for Scott and Riley 
Um, so looking back at that clip that we just saw, which was a great scene that I'm very fond of, you know, Ryan and Carson having their first conversation about Nancy's biological parentage. When you prepared for that scene, did you compare notes beforehand or are you just like drop in and go into it on the day and surprise each other? I mean, you want to you want to start? Well, sure. Um, yeah, we, we didn't really have any conversations with each other. I don't remember, did we? Um, I think the only thing we, we wound up talking a little bit about, there was an incarnation of the scene that was more extreme. Yeah. Right? I mean, do you want to speak to that at all? Yeah. Um, briefly, I guess the, uh, yeah, in the original, there was a, a motivation of, of Ryan uh, threatening. Being more angry. Yeah. yeah, he was angry. And I think that's where the, uh, it originally started. And, um, and I had a great long talk with Noga and Melinda about it. And uh, I just always feel that with the character that's uh, angry, uh, before you can show anger, let's show why he's angry. And that anger came from hurt and betrayal. And I wanted to make sure that we got those undertones in there to build up to the anger. Um, and they did an awesome job of, of, uh, rewriting it a little bit and, and cutting out, you know, and building up and showing the, the, the layers that, that gets to the anger. Um, so it did shape the scene a little bit differently. Uh, but we didn't really talk beforehand with each other and say, Hey, I'm going to do this. You're going to do that. There was no uh, choreographed dance, uh, but I, I prefer that. Like, I like to just be in the moment, you know, you, the other character has their motivation and, uh, and I have mine and that makes it real because in real life, no one really knows what the other person is coming into it with. And so, uh, I love that with, with playing with Scott, um, because, uh, I know Scott does his homework as do I. And so it's fun to put those two chess pieces together on, on the board. Yeah, and I, I agree. I feel like there are, I never, I'm never really a big fan of, um, you know, sort of presetting anything with, with another actor in a scene. But what I did find was just because we would spend some time with each other where we weren't necessarily working together and, you know, the reading scripts and the, and our character, the way our characters would interact. Every time I found myself starting to talk about this moment in any way, my instinct was to just not at all. And, and I think there are some scenes and some stories where it maybe can serve both actors to just kind of, I don't know, kick things around in, in a way that just kind of sort of can inform you of something. But I think in this particular moment, you've got these two characters who have been just sort of torn into this moment where everything is brand new. No one really knows exactly how they feel about anything because no one expected to be here. And so I think when you walked out of the woods, I, I, I had no idea what was coming and what, you know, uh, where that scene would go. And that's hopefully how, how most of these scenes want to feel. The one thing I can say that, you know, uh, Larry Tang, our producing director, who's just like, all hell Larry Tang, um, he gave me this note while we were doing the scene, which was, um, I think my intention was, I feel like Carson is, is very much in a place here where he just feels like he wants to just stand in front of people and keep living, you know, keep living with you, keep living, obviously, especially with Nancy, and just give this thing a chance to be whatever it has to be to get to a better place. And Larry just gave me this little note with, with both of you guys in that scene where he just was like, don't, he's like, I don't want you to break eye contact. He was like, just don't ever just hold your, hold them. Don't, don't look away, don't whatever. And what I knew he was get, getting at there was having Carson be this person who was going to just stand and give these other people a chance to be and do and say whatever it is they needed to without copping out, without breaking away, without misdirecting anything. And it was just one of those beautiful little bits of direction that I felt like was incredibly valuable. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, that, that scene really bums me out watching it. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I, I think Scott, what he was really doing was he was setting up the foreshadowing of our bromance. He was like, do not break Riley's gaze. We're going to set this up and just plant the seeds for a bromance in season two. Yes. But, Show that lean into the chemistry. <laughs> now, listen, speaking of all these secrets, I've got a question for Scott, if I may. Um, so, you know, talking about you knowing the biggest secret of the season and, and Carson had a lot of them. Uh, but obviously the fact that uh, you were not her biological father, you had said uh, that you knew that from, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I knew that uh, from the beginning that I was uh, her biological father. So knowing these things, and I'm always curious as an actor, my fellow actors, what they do with their work. Um, do you prefer knowing some of these, these hidden gems, these secrets, uh, and do you use that? How do you use that in your work? Or would you rather not know and kind of just follow the, the arc blindly? Yeah, so um, it's, it's a really good question. I feel like, um, I think the shortest answer, the most, the way I could sort of frame it best would be to say that in general, I kind of like to experience the story as best I can, like somebody who is, uh, like, like someone who's watching the story, right? So I don't want to have too much information. I don't want to know things that are going to somehow steal the liveliness of a real moment in time for, for me as an actor or for my character. Um, but I always want to be armed with the things I need to understand in terms of what my character would understand so I can be appropriately in the reality of what's going on, right? And so I feel like me knowing you know, obviously me as the actor, uh, knowing that Carson knows this truth from day one was essential. You know, I would, I would be flying. There are ways you can fly blind as a character and an actor, but that, I don't think that one would have served me or our story in any real way. And so it was tricky. There were definitely moments, and I know Ken, Kennedy can attest to this, where, um, sorry, where, I would find myself on set and I just felt like I had just a lot of math in my head. It was like the stuff I know, the stuff I can share, the stuff I can share in a way that feels as honest as I can be without revealing things that I can't. Um, so it definitely led to a lot of complicated process as a character, but that's exactly the life that Carson was living. You know, he was, he was, in many ways trapped in this world of having to have lists of things that he could talk about that he couldn't things he had to cordon off and keep secret um i like to think that um uh that he still can sort of stand behind all the decisions he made as complicated they as they ha have become and as hurtful as they've become but um uh, but yeah, I think that was that was definitely something that felt like I would have been I would have been I would have had a hard time not knowing that truth and performing, I think, this first season of Nancy Drew the way I needed to. Um, but it was a painful truth to have to reckon with day in and day out because I was staring into this face that I love and knowing how essential this relationship is and to feel like it was at risk in every moment was excruciating. Um, and so I, I, I hope there's, <laughs> there are brighter days ahead where, where this truth being out in the open leads to um, something bigger and stronger and better. But for the time being, as we saw in that clip, it's, it's tricky. It's very tricky. Um, and speaking of, you know, so Kennedy for you, you, you did not know the secret um, of your of your identity, um, but and so you talked a little bit earlier about how you sort of approached, like for example, scenes with Carson in our relationship that it always felt like there was this kind of hopeful trajectory that we were heading towards a healing, heading towards that we were coming home to each other, as as yeah. Melinda put it. Um, so I was wondering if, since the first part of season one was so, so sort of motivated by the uncovering of these mysteries and 
two of the people that were central to that, which is Ryan and Carson, mm -hmm. were so full of mysteries to uncover. And then once this truth comes out, now those mysteries kind of go away, but all of a sudden you're dealing with two people that were, uh, that you were most concerned with in your life, who are people that you had no idea they really were. And mm -hmm. in the most profound way. So I was wondering if there is, if, if, if you can talk about how it's affected the process by which, or the experience of playing scenes with me as Carson and, and Riley as Ryan, and if there are any things that have you like feel like it's going to be challenging or exciting or fun or hard moving forward. Yeah, big question. Lots yeah. of things there. <laughs> uh, absolutely the season that we already saw. I mean, Melinda and Nova have said it this way in such a, a love, like a phrase with such a lovely bow on it, which is that, you know, Nancy is a girl who solves mystery and, and, and ends up being the biggest mystery herself. Mm. And so she's sort of left with that. And she doesn't, she doesn't know what, she doesn't spend a lot of time digging around in here because she's very interested in, in other people and, and has this desire. And, and it's served her in some ways. It's allowed her to mask a lot of the things that she's she's feeling. And once all of these mysteries kind of unravel and these two new aspects of those mysteries, the sort of results of those solved mysteries spring up in, in Ryan and Carson, she's looking at them and it's like, okay, well, that's a lot about me emotionally <laughs> and I don't know how to handle that. Um, so it's sort of this is a whole new chapter for Nancy in regards to if she wants to confront this, she has to really face it. And I don't know where, if she's really ready to do that. And so there's a lot of challenge in feeling like she just went through the ringer this whole season of just relentlessly pursuing, you know, the end of these mysteries and the justice for these women. And she is exhausted and confused and she never expected this to be the ending. And it's sort of like, I honestly, I don't have it in me to turn inwards and do the deep inner work that I need to do. Like I'm exhausted. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I feel lied to. And I just did all this stuff. And it was really it felt like for nothing because somebody could have given me the answer right away and he didn't do it. And, and I think that she's just, I remember filming a scene at the end of the season. It was the scene that I did with Riley when Nancy, admits to him that, that she's his daughter. And I remember we, I was talking with Larry was directing, who was uh, mentioned earlier. And we were trying to, there's something missing. I was trying to make it something. And, and I was just like, I, at that time in the season two, and it was raining as it does every time Riley and I have ever filmed a scene together. That's a fact, by the way, it's always raining. Pouring. Whenever Riley and I do a scene together, which I think is very symbolic. Um, but I remember telling Larry, I was like, Larry, I don't have anything left. I was like, I don't have anything. Nancy doesn't have anything. She doesn't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this. Like she's so, she's so done. She's done. And he's like, that is the scene right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so we went and that's the scene that we, you know, we, we saw and, so I think that's sort of where we leave her in regards to these two characters at the end of season one, but there's some. I'm obviously selfishly very excited for a potential reconciliation with Carson um, because obviously we all know Carson, he never had any cruel intentions and he's still her father and the man that raised her. And um, there's so much potential for a wonderful relationship there once, if they get over this. And so I'm really excited for that because I love Scott. And I want to be happy with God. <laughs> um, but also, I think there's such a fascinating dynamic in, and I'm really excited to explore the relationship with Nancy and Ryan because they have a lot of similarities. And like they, but like the worst parts of both of them come out when they're with each other right now. And so they just kind of like throw punches at each other. And so it's interesting to see how that will develop because I think she sees some of herself in him. And as he's really starting to change 
and, you know, rise to the occasion and, you know, embrace a new way of life in order to support this new relationship with Nancy as, as his daughter. You know, I think that she, there's a potential for her, some, for her to be a bit inspired by that, you know, when she's feeling so lost and so just up against a wall and feels like she has to fight her way out. You know, I think that that could be an interesting time for Ryan to lead by example a little bit, which I had never thought about before I answered this question just now, but that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot to be excited about for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it'll go, but I'm very excited to see it. Um, Riley, speaking of Nancy as your daughter and also what you were asking Scott of kind of how information affects uh, your work as an actor. Um, you, as most people know, are a new dad, relatively new, mm -hmm. uh, of a very young daughter. And how does an experience like that in your personal life feed into Ryan's experience coming to terms with Nancy as his daughter in the present, but then also all that he's missed out on in the past? You know, he never got to see her as a little baby and, you know, grow with her in that way. Yeah, what did it say? Well, life imitates art, and uh, it, it, it's interesting. So my my baby's almost one now, and when we were filming this, she was very young, like four or five months old. Um, and I remember sitting down with Melinda on set one day, and she was asking me, kind of picking around, and I didn't know what it was about quite yet. But she was like, "What would you do if you found out that you had a baby that you didn't even know about?" And, <laughs> And I was really honest with her. I was like, poured my heart out. I was like, I would be pissed. And, I, you know, uh, knowing now what a special thing a young baby is. And, and then and now, uh, a year later, seeing all the things that I've gotten to do with, with my daughter uh, and then realizing the, the weight of all of that for, for 19 years that Ryan missed out on. I think that Riley as myself now realizes the, the weight of that a lot more than Ryan should have. Um, I don't think that Ryan, Ryan was probably like Riley uh, previous to his baby. He didn't really understand how much he was missing out on. But I think that giving the layers of, of uh, the heaviness of it for, for me, I put it in there. Um, and I think that that helped, helped Ryan's character. I mean, literally, uh, I think it gave him more of a character by uh, caring so much and realizing, oh my God, I, he missed out on all of this. Uh, and now I, a year later, I, I think that it's even heavier. It, coincidentally, oddly enough, it makes me understand Carson more than mm -hmm. uh, Ryan in a way, mm -hmm. because it, biological or not, the sacrifice, the dedication uh, that it takes to be a parent is so heavy and, and uh, so deep. And so to know that Carson did that for, for Nancy, uh, that means uh, a lot to me now for the character of Carson. Um, and I think Ryan just, uh, you know, being Ryan, he thinks about all these milestones, but he doesn't think about the things that go in between. And that's like the, the real work that it takes to be a parent. And so coincidentally, as much as it, it helped me with my character of Ryan, it helped me personally understand Carson more. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and maybe some sometime down the road that'll play in. Um, and I really, really was uh, intrigued by what Nogan and Melinda said about Ryan having daddy issues and, and needing Carson. I, I totally agree with that. And I think that that's, uh, I'm, now I'm like so excited. Can you please send us a script? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's just amazing. Um, uh, and speaking of, of, of scripts, um, I have a question for Melinda Noga. I'm going to dig now. This is my opportunity to get some, some dirt out on season two. Um, uh, you know, you guys, uh, you threw in, you, you ladies, you threw in so many curveballs in season one. I've been a part of a lot of shows, and I think that it was, uh, this is one of the most, like, it was just such a crazy season. And I, we, we always said, like, there were so many episodes that could have been season ending cliffhangers. Uh, and um, yet it was just like, like another episode for us. And so you, you, we, we resolved a lot, but then there's a lot left to be um, dug up and, and to, 
to go on after. What do you guys think uh, now that you've started the season two writer's room? What's the most fun? What's the most challenging, uh, frustrating, difficult, uh, exciting things about season two? You you can really go anywhere with this. Uh, you know, you set up a few little things, but really it's a whole new series uh, with the same characters that we've now grown to love. So what's it like in the writer's room trying to develop arcs for, for us clowns? <laughs> First of all, it's such a joy because we get to know you and it's really a pleasure to have you visit with us and we listen to your speech patterns and we think about things that kind of make you tick as people and we try to write into that when we can. But I think the toughest thing is to let go of that little voice in your head that puts pressure on you to top last week's twist, you know, or compares one episode, one arc to another. I think as a writer, you kind of have to discipline yourself to stay in the moment of coming up with those things because, you know, you want to find emotionally truthful moments for a play. What do I know about these characters or what am I excited about and putting them in circumstances that will drive them into interesting dilemmas and choices. And how can I bounce other characters off of them so that the next thing they say, it has to be this line of dialogue. There's nothing else that would come out of their mouth at that moment because of what we set up. You know, you want to be authentic and, and kind of like honest, but Fortunately for us, the really enjoyable part of it, I think, is that we work with these awesome people, this writing staff of, you know, a dozen fine minds, hilarious personalities, wonderful deep thinkers and, and beautiful human beings who help us come up with this stuff every day. I mean, they've got these fantastic ideas and these crazy twists and turns and, and a lot of the things that really make you laugh in the script are coming out of the brains of our other writers and, and it's a group kind of hive mind that it's so fun, you know, it's like a big improv game. So we're kind of like having these long rambling discussions and then suddenly it turns into, well, not suddenly, but it does turn into a 43 page script, you know? And, and then magically it gets transformed into something that is filmed in reality by hundreds of talented people in Vancouver and Los Angeles. So, I mean, it's the greatest job in the world, in my opinion. I remember the first time speaking of those little dialogue, like you notice our speech patterns. I remember the first time I read something in the script where I went, oh my God. I think it was, I think Nan said, oh no, no. Which I say in my life all the time. And I was like, you're in my head. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> I'm actually gonna jump to a question that Kennedy Noga's gonna have a turn in just a second, but. Kennedy, um, I want to know what the differences and similarities are in working with Scott as a scene partner versus Riley as a scene partner. Ah, very different. Um, I think it's always it's always the dynamic between the two actors. So, you know, my experience with Riley is different than Scott's experience with Riley or, you know, vice versa or what have you. It's kind of like the combined energies and what, what comes out of that. With Scott, Scott and I walked into this meeting each other and realizing that there is so much history and connection that's already there intrinsically between us as people. And I've never really been able to explain that. I, <laughs> it's just sort of something that you just feel. I mean, Scott, I've said this about a billion times, but Scott reminds me very much of my, my real dad, who I have a fantastic relationship with. Um, and so I feel like our work together is always very deeply emotional. There's a deep emotional thread in anything we do together. So that just opens up a very different, um, a different working environment. You know, you're really fighting for the love in those scenes, but then there's also such an enormous amount of like, you can't hide from your family. You know, when you're having a conversation from them, like you, you can't keep your cards close to your chest because they see it. And so I think that that's something with Scott that I feel like anytime I work with him, I can't hide from, I as an actor can't hide from Scott and Nancy as a character can't hide from Carson. And I mean, she can pretend to or try to, but really at the end of the day, he knows what she's feeling. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of emotion in, in our work and that's sort of a lot of heart in it. And then with Riley, uh, Riley as an actor is very alive and spontaneous. And especially our two characters are so feisty with one another there's a lot of like jabs and, and playing and it's, it's a lot sharper. And she's always, Nancy's 
point of view for Ryan. She's always just trying to figure him out. She doesn't, she can't put her finger on him and it kind of never has been able to. And so she's always, it, that affects, you know, my experience as an actor in that I have to try, I feel like I have to be more creative with the ways that I approach getting to him as a character or as an actor in the scene so that I can, as my character, get what I'm, what I want. Um, so I think there's like elements of the relationship that you have with another person as an actor. And then the relationship that your characters have with one another that really kind of paints the full picture of what your experience is in, experience is doing a scene together. So I would say those are my summaries, but they're both fantastic to work with. And I say that truthfully, not because you asked me, but genuinely both of them are fantastic to work with. So I just feel very lucky that you guys are my two dads. <laughs> Back at you. Back at you. Likewise. Well, off of that, I have a question for the two dads in the room, Riley and Scott. You know, something that's so cool about the show is while we sit in LA and are obsessed with all the characters, you guys actually know these characters just as well, if not better than us, because you live and breathe them every day. It's your life. And so I'm curious, guys, if you look into your magic crystal ball, where do you think each of your relationships are going to go with Nancy in season two and beyond? What do you predict? Um, well, now I'm really excited about a bromance with Scott. So that's all I can think about. <laughs> I know, forget Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the year 2020 has made all of our crystal balls very, very blurry. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I want to second what what Riley said. Like I, I have to say, in thinking about the like, you know, we're joking about the bromance, but like that conversation about you know what ultimately what what Ryan could need in in Carson and what Carson could need in Ryan. I mean, this like you said, this the shape of this triangle is is sort of it's really unique and um and it, that that gets me really excited and it does it does make me think back to early on though you know i feel like every time we were in scenes together you know there's that there's the episode where where we um where you come to the house and i'm trying to help you through the uh you know the will and different things and I don't know, man. I always just, I, and I think to speak to what Kennedy said, I think a lot of this feels, you know, this work imitating life, uh, life imitating art. I, I've always just felt a kinship and uh, a, a cool thing with, with Riley as a person. And, and I think Carson ha does have this uh, affection of a kind for, for Ryan. And, you know, I, I felt it in those early scenes and it's complicated, obviously, because of his father and their family. And, um, but that, that does, I suppose, looking into the crystal ball as, as clearly as I could hope to see it, um, obviously, first and foremost, you know, Carson's whole world is Nancy. And the idea that he has lost her right now is, is, you know, as deeply painful as anything he, he could ever experience. And so, you know, my hope as a, as a character and my hope as an actor, just because I have, uh, I need Kennedy as much as Carson needs Nancy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I hope that, um, you know, that they, they really find each other. I, I hope they come home to each other. And, and um, but that said, you know, looking at what we did in season one, some of the most difficult, painful story that we told was incredibly valuable experience. You know, I, I think, you know, watching these two characters pine for each other, but not have a way in was something that's very powerful to, 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 to watch. It's painful, but it's good story. It's good storytelling and um, gives our audience something to yearn for. And I think similarly now with, with, you know, with Ryan, um, you know, there's there's going to be. I think our audience is going to hope that Ryan, Ryan and Nancy, as biological father and daughter, 
find a way to come home to each other. And so, you know, I, I, I hope that there are these homecomings in store for these three characters, each with each other. And um, uh, I'm excited, you know, all this conversation has, you know, obviously we've been away from each other in this show for far too long. Um, but this just has me thrilled at, at getting back to it and, st and, and jumping back into this story that I just, I just adore. I agree with Scott on that for sure. I know it, it is kind of, it's poignant that we're all sitting here doing this panel together and we've been, we've been far apart, held apart by a pandemic for so long. <laughs> so it's really nice to all be together on the screen. <laughs> I have, a, I have a question that I've wondered about. Um, a question, this question is for you, Noga, which is that, so obviously from day one um, in creating this show, what we've talked about, you know, since I've been part of the show and what everyone knows is that there's an incredible affection for and inspiration um, taken from the original book canon, from, from the Nancy Drew book series that everyone knows and loves. And in making this new incarnation of it, it's clear that most everything is driven by love for, for, the, for the original books and wanting to be faithful. But there are obvious moments where there are departures from the original books. And some of those are teeny little things that maybe people wouldn't even notice. Some things are, are, are bigger departures like this. Uh, like my two dads. <laughs> um, and I was wondering if you could talk about, I've, I've always been curious, if, is there a process by which you kind of have things come up and make decisions about things that you want to be faithful to, things that you don't want to touch, things that you feel like you intentionally really want to reimagine? Is there a process by which you decide one way or another whether something is going to stay the same or change? Mm, that's such a good question, because when when you are adapting a literary work that's as well known and as famous and has influenced as many generations of people as Nancy Drew, you don't want to mess it up. And I think that the thing that um, I always set out to do with this series is take what was best and universal about Nancy Drew, that she's brave that she's smart, that she doesn't ask for permission to do things. She's such a, a hero. Um, and it's that's why like, you know, Hillary Clinton and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and all these like people, whenever they're asked, who's your literary hero? They always say Nancy Drew um, because of that. So we never ever wanted to leave that behind in creating the show. But the obvious things that we did need to leave behind are that, you know, the early books have a lot of racism in them. They have a lot of anti-Semitism in them. It was like kind of, I guess, fashionable at the time, you know? And so we wanted to always make sure that in creating this show, it was diverse and inclusive and authentic and it felt um, relevant to the world nowadays. Um, you know, that a lot of season one came about during the break of the Me Too era. So I think it informed a lot of the story of season one. Um, and a lot of what happens in season two is kind of the fallout of that and also what's been happening in our culture and our society since then. So just making sure that the show always feels like it's commenting on the world that it lives in. Um, but I guess the final piece I would say as to, you know, in the process of knowing what to put on screen and what not to put on screen, the appeal of a character like Nancy Drew on the page is that she's very perfect. You know, she really doesn't mess up that often and she can separate herself from the mysteries that she solves. I always felt that it was imperative in creating the show that our version of Nancy Drew is messy. And again, the thing that Kennedy said earlier that, that she's been solving all these other people's mysteries all her life, but she was the greatest mystery all along and that that's what drives the engine of, of her story in the show. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, so guys, it's been, it's been wonderful um, to see all of your faces on screen and all of those faces out there watching us. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are so excited to bring you the second season of Nancy Drew soon. Um, and we want to conclude our panel 
by thanking you and reminding you that you can all watch the first season of Nancy Drew for free on CWTV.com. You can watch it on the CW app as well. So enjoy season one, get ready for season two. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.